are smaller than a rabbit. And what makes them different from the rabbit is that the rabbit can run to save its life, but the coney is defenseless. It cannot do anything to save its life. And the coney gets itself out of the way of the lions and the tigers and the bears and the snakes and everything that may be threatening its life. And the coney makes its home way up in the rocks. When you climb up in this life, when you make yourself available to move from the level of nothing to a level of heights in the rocks of Jesus Christ, you're going to have a different kind of enemy. You don't have to worry about lions because they're not, you're, you're not down by their level again. You don't have to worry about snakes because you are above their level. And recognize that the only enemy that the Kone has to worry about is the mighty eagle, which is a powerful, powerful bird. The Bible talks about the eagle. The Bible says that those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount up with wings like the eagle. There are many countries as well that use the eagle as their national symbol because the eagle is a bird worth emulating. And therefore, when you are in the cleft of the rocks, that's the kind of enemy you have, an eagle kind of enemy. But the coney is still wise because it makes his house in the rocks where not even the eagle can get in there. These are animals. These are creatures that have, you know, blended themselves and understood nature and they are so wise. Some of us don't have any common sense and we're people. Common sense is very uncommon among many of us. I'm not trying to, to, um, to, to, yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to embarrass you or to insult your intelligence, but it's true. Common sense, not common. And that's why God says we need to learn wisdom from these little things. Not the big elites that we think are most important, so let us look to these celebrities because they're the ones that will guide our thoughts. No, these little things, watch how they work. They hide themselves in the rocks that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. They're, they're defenseless and therefore their strategy is hiding themselves. We have to hide ourselves because we're bombarded with so many issues. We have problems in our families. For young people, their parents are fighting, they're divorcing, their bill, bills are piling up. We struggle with so many things that are often out of our control. And instead of sticking around to fight these things, we need to hide ourselves in the cleft of the rock where Jesus is. There's an old song that says, Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. We have to remind ourselves the scripture that says, He will hide me, hide me from the terror by night and from the arrow that flieth by day. Hide me from the people who want to see my demise. Remind me, Lord, that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hide me in the morning, hide me in the night, hide me when I come in and when I go out. Hide me at the job in schools, hide me everywhere. Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. And though the waters thereof roar and are troubled. There is a river, the Bible says. The streams thereof make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her and she shall not be moved. God shall help her at the right early. The heathen rage. The kingdoms were moving, uttered his voice, and the earth melt. The Lord of hosts is with us. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but recognize that you're not alone. You have heavenly backative. The God of Jacob is our refuge. David says, the Lord is my light 
and my salvation. Who shall I fear? Tell me. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, I tell you, you know, I know this verse from I was a very, very young guy. Because my daddy ever chanted. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me, the heat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. I never had a clue what he was talking about. But now I know. Though an host should encamp against me, recognize brothers and sisters, we have the confidence our heart should not be afraid, though wars should rise against me. In this I will be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For I love this verse. For in the time of trouble, anybody in trouble tonight, come on. Say in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Your enemies cannot reach you. Come on, tell somebody your enemies can't reach you. Because you're hidden. You are hidden. Your enemies cannot see you. Your enemies cannot see your children. That's why you're not planning a funeral tonight. Because you are hidden by the Almighty God. If God was not hiding you, you would be dead. You would never get married. You would never get through to university. Because every day that you step foot off your bed, the enemy is out for you to kill you. But God said you cannot touch that one. Not that one. Not that one. He is hiding you. God is hiding you. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 27. The locusts, they have no king, yet they go forth, all of them in bands. You know, there's poor in numbers. Yeah, the bands mean crowds, holy. There's power in numbers. You're more likely to be kidnapped if you walk alone after certain hours. But when it's a lot of you, people may may think twice because one might get away. Come on, sir. You might get a few, mm. but if one get away, you're in problems because they're gonna put, they're gonna point you out in the ID parade mm. and say that's the one. Mm. So they're gonna leave you alone. Mm. Recognize that we have churches. Mm. I mean, this is one thing that I've observed since I've come to Canada. I mean, when I came, I, 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 I kind of hold a very low profile watching things, mm. and I realize that it's every man for themselves these days mm. in the church. Yes, sir. Yeah, they use the pulpit to let their brethren know why they shouldn't come to your church. Because you don't have the anointing they have. Yep. And they talk down to you and they say, you know, those who go to college, they have, you know, the, the people who are atheists teaching them and they go to college and you cannot go to college to teach the word of God because the Holy Ghost is my teacher. You hear them truth? My goodness, that one you touch Marcus, he said all the time. Yeah, it, it drives me nuts. I watch them. And instead of coming to support you, they will tell their brethren, don't go to the other churches in Toronto because this is the house of God and God is here. The devil is alive. The church is a body of believers Amen. across the world. That's why I don't go everywhere, you know. And it's not because of those things, because I'm a man that I tend to say things, and after I say it, I realize I said it. You, know, you ever have a problem where your mouth speaks faster than your brain is working? That's me, I have that sickness, pray for me. And so a lot of times I tend to speak and it's when I say it, I said, oops, I said it. Because I believe that if I am a Christian, 
And you invite me to your church. I should walk in and I like to walk with my tambourine sometimes. And I would hope that you have a tambourine and song. But I'm saying, I want to walk in and know that I am in God's house. That's right. If you say, welcome, Brother Junior, that's fine. But if you don't welcome me, I'm still good because I'm in God's house. That's right. But we have a tendency as a church to divide ourselves. And that's why the world laughs at us. The world takes us for a big joke. Because we are fighting each other. We, we don't even believe our own Bible. Our own Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But yet we fight one another. The, the locusts, they have no, no king, but they have order, they have wisdom. They, they, they march around in unity. The body of Christ needs to get this wisdom in this way. Yeah, we have some pastors that we need to sit down and, and say, listen, all of you have big degrees, but put your degrees aside for a minute and, and stop the foolishness. Yeah, man, just, just listen, just eat. Come off of your, come off, come off of your high horse. Come down. Take yourself down and notch our 55. And recognize that you're a server. The pastor is the chief server. Yeah. Because I don't think a pastor should ask a member to do something if he's not willing to do it. Yeah. I mean, that's the church. Jesus Christ, he never drove around. I mean, they never had expensive cars. But watch what Jesus did. He, he sat where the people sat. He ate what they ate. He talked to everybody. But we come and we separate ourselves. You, I mean, you can't even find... God, you can't talk to your own pastor. You're trying to get pastor for three weeks. And, and, him, and him make film schedule full so I'm my pastor. Mm. Mm. But some of them don't even email you back. <laughs> I mean, the church needs to look at ourselves. Yeah. And that's why the young people don't want to come. Because I see the hypocrisy. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. The young people see that. But mm. how, how they, they said that. You know, you're not to go to this church and the Bible says such a thing. Mm. You think, listen, they're, they're small but they're wise. Yeah. They're young but they're not stupid. Amen. And we have to begin to look out. I mean, I, I came and I was a part, I'm a part of the Hamilton Church of God. Mm -hmm. And I came and I noticed the same thing in my church. That my church people, I don't know why they never went anywhere. And I, I started to seek out places to go. And carry them. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Rev, uh, here's a letter from such and such, a pastor. If you, if, if you give me the okay, you don't have to worry. I'll bring the people. Mm -hmm. I just want you to say yes. And him say yes, and I call a meeting mm. with the choir, and I say, we're going to Toronto Saturday, and I get two, two buses. The people want to go. The people know the value of unity. Yes. But if the leader doesn't think it is important. Yes. You see, a church is a reflection of the leader, you know, Bishop. Yes. I've been thinking about what I've seen here since I came here on, on Friday. And I watch Bishop. I watch Mother Walker. I watch Son Walker. And little son, grandson Walker. I watch everybody. And when you see the walkers, you see the church. So if a pastor think he's fooling anybody, they're not fooling me. Because the first lady I see at your door represents you. So make sure that that woman at the door is nice and welcoming and friendly. Because that's the first woman I see. I see you last when you come up to preach. And you so busy, everybody lining up to greet you, which is okay. I might not get to greet you after church, but I mean the sister at the door and the one who sits beside me who comes every Sunday, who smiles and says, thank you for coming. Uh -huh. I mean, so many people come over there, they take, take themselves out of the way mm. and come and shoot my hand and my wife's hand. And you can't fake that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's what the church is. And many times... People will close their, their windows. They, they have, 
you know, a great way of securing their homes. And we are foolish when we fight against another church. If the church were to unite. My God. Oh, oh my God. God. Come on, somebody. Yes. If the church were to re were to unite, yeah. Toronto couldn't stand us, man. Mm. The locusts, if we hear that there's an invasion of locusts in Toronto, every window closed. The traffic would not be as much because people will say, you know what? Today, I'm not going out. You know what? The locusts will allow them to change their behavior. To change their actions in their homes by closing the windows and closing the doors. And people's behavior changes drastically. When the church comes together, people will take note. People will recognize that, listen, these are not normal ordinary people. Do you know why they don't mess with Muslims? Mm. <laughs> you know why they, they can't mess with Muslims? Okay. We are the only ones who tear down one another. Yeah. The other day there was this controversy with um with Kim Burrell. Oh my goodness, because she she took she she said something about the homosexual people. And no uh, our own Christian people would have killed her. Yes. Yeah. Yes. a Muslim brother on one of the TV stations got up and said, as a pastor, she had a right to say what she said in a religious setting. A Muslim man stood up for a Christian. The Muslims, they're not afraid to tell you that if you mess with us, we'll kill you. Yes. We'll kill you for Allah. We'll bomb you up for Muhammad. Don't you mess with us. <laughs> They'll tell you. Because for them, that's honoring you. Don't disrespect their Allah. Mm -hmm. Their mission is to respect Allah's honor. Yes. It's to defend Muhammad. That's why I can't serve them kind of gods. Because if you have to defend your God something, do you? <laughs> but that's for another deal. Jesus Christ can defend himself. And we don't have to die for Jesus. He already died for us. Yeah, some people are searching for their God. We don't have to search for our God because he's reaching down to all of us. That's why I love my God. But that's for another day. When the churches combine for everything, brothers and sisters, we will shake the enemy's camp. That's right. But he wants to see us divided and fighting. Mm. Verse 28. The spider, he taketh hold with her hands mm -hmm. and is in the king's palace. Yes. The spider is extremely small. Mm -hmm. And yet, its hands are what it uses to fend for itself. Mm -hmm. If it desires to have it, it has to pull it in itself. Repeat after me. If it is to be, it's up to me. Come on, say that again. If it is to be, it's up to me. That's a quote by William Johnson. We have to take responsibility for our own life. No one is going to do it for you. Not your mama, not your daddy, not your grandma. You have to go out and get it. This is not in the Bible, but it could be. God helps those who help themselves. Ask any successful person, and they'll tell you that they've never received a bunch of money dropping from the sky into their lap. God works behind the scenes and empowers, he provides, he equips, he breaks barriers, he moves mountains, he demotes and he promotes, but you have to work. That's right. Grades don't come if you don't study. Mm -hmm. I believe in prayer and I believe in God and when my students would be praying. I mean, they, they, they're trying to ban prayers in schools. If they want to ban prayers, they need to ban exams. Mm. 
Yeah. If you want to ban prayers in schools, ban exams. Because everybody be praying on the exam day. Lord, let me pass. Lord, let me pass. Lord, let me pass. If you did not study, you will not pass. You're going to pray, and the Lord will hear you, and you will not pass. Because you were given the tools to prepare. That's right. And you went to the movies. And you went to the party. And you were on WhatsApp and Facebook and Snapchat. And now them have What's Snap. Literally. And you're on all of these things. And when you don't pray and you say, Amen, Lord, I know you heard me. Yes, he did, but you still ain't going to pass. Because <laughs> you got to study. study. If you want it, go get it. And when you study, then what God does, he increases your intelligence and allows you to reproduce in a manner that will impress your lecturer to say you got the concept. Yeah, it's not about regurgitating. So recognize if you want to get it, you have to go get it. Trust God because you can't do it alone. But you have to make it, make do with your hands. The sky is the limit. And I don't know where your king's palace might be. It might be in parliament, it might be in the ministry, it might be in teaching, preaching, the medical field, entrepreneurial kings and kingdoms, whatever those palaces may be. Only God knows. But you have to go pull it in yourself. Learn the lesson, brothers and sisters, the lesson of wisdom. Proverbs 4 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all your gettings, get understanding. Recognize, brothers and sisters, we have to prepare ourselves. We have to hide ourselves. We have to unite ourselves and we have to go and work with our hands. Amen. Recognize that God has great things for your future. He has your future in his hands. He has the future of your children in his hands. This is not just a message for the young. But let us all get wisdom. From what we consider these insignificant things recognize that God has greatness for all of us and he knows the plans that he has for you plans that are good and those plans that will make you excel just close your eyes for a moment and bow your heads He knows my name. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. And he hears me when I call.
to somebody tonight you're not prepared you may not be prepared for your future you may not be prepared for the coming of Jesus Christ we don't want to go through these doors tonight and make the mistake and tell ourselves that we have tomorrow because even if we have tomorrow, you have been called tonight to prepare yourself. And I don't know where you are, but God knows who you are and where you are. And he knows your every thought, everything about you. Your insecurities, your failures, your successes, your ambitions. And if you want God to bring you through, to continue to bring you through, I'm going to invite you to come. Even if you have already surrendered to Jesus Christ. You know what your ambitions are. You know what your struggles are. You know what you want to see in your life and it's not happening. Come and ask God for wisdom. He says let those who lack it ask for it and he will give it to you. Don't watch anybody. Don't look around at your friends. Let this be the time when they think you're a fool. But he who is in need is the one who will seek. I'm inviting you to come. We won't be here for a very, very long time. I'm aware that we have work tomorrow. But I still want to give somebody an opportunity to come so that the servants of God can pray for you and with you. I'm going to do the verse one more time. I have a father. I have a father. He calls me his own. He'll never leave me.
you that are standing here tonight, you feel so insignificant inside yourself. But I want you to know that God knows you. He knows your name. Pastor Martin will pray for 